Hello students, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Neeraj from Wolaka University. I am working in Department of Management. Now we have already covered chapter number 1, 2 and 3. And today we are going to talk about chapter number 4. Which is general principle of insurance contracts. Now principles are like you know rules. In English there is grammar. If the grammar is correct, the language is more or less correct. So, grammar is a building block without which a language cannot be known. Uh, a language cannot be correct. Similarly, insurance has some principles. Unless and until we know about these principles thoroughly, we will not be able to master the subject of risk and insurance. Now, students, if you have not covered Chapter number 1, 2, 3, already there is a playlist, Risk and Insurance. Please see that and then you start with this particular chapter. Because it is in continuation. And if you miss those chapters, it will be difficult for you somewhere to understand this topic. So, what are the principles which we are going to see today is uh, Principle of Insurable Interest, Principle of Utmost Good Faith, Principle of Indemnity, Principle of Subrogation, and Principle of Contribution, and Principle of Proximate Cause. All these we are going to study today. Uh, I will try to cover all this in one video, otherwise it will be in two parts. So, uh, also I want to tell that this particular channel is about management subjects. I have, uh, you know, uh, theories covered in motivation, in leadership, and also we have some uh, on research, and you know, this risk and insurance. So like this, I am trying to bring out all the subjects related to management. Only if you like to know about management subjects and research, then I request you to subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, it is of no use to you. So, if you like a management subject and subjects related to management, then this is the good channel for you to understand various concepts. And I would request you to subscribe my channel in case you are related to management and you are interested in that. Also, there is bell icon, you try to put that, you want to press that, all the notifications will come to you. Having said that, let us start with our interesting title today. Now, our first uh, principle is principle of insurable interest. The principle of insurable interest states that the insured must lose financially if loss occurs or must incur some other kind of harm if the loss takes place. For example, a person has an insurable interest in his automobile or car or television or house. If it is damaged, obviously he will get financial loss. That is called insurable interest. Unless and until there is insurable interest, you cannot take insurance. So, what is the reason for this particular principle? First, an insurable interest is necessary to prevent gambling. Why we are saying to prevent gambling? Because, for example, as it says, for example, you can see here, for example, one could insure the property of another and hope for an early loss. I don't know anybody, I just take somebody's house randomly and insure that house and think that when it will be, you know, when fire will come or when some damage will happen to the house so that I can get that. But I cannot do that. Other example is I catch hold of some beggar. Somebody catch hold of a beggar and insure that particular beggar for his life. And then that person thinks of, you know, getting him 
killed or die, uh, killed on a, with an accident so that he can get a benefit. Like this is not allowed in insurance. Why? Because of the principle of insurable interest. What does it, principle of insurable interest say? Principle of insurance, insurable interest is that you can insure a person, you can insure your prop, any property only and only if if there is any damage to them, there is a financial loss to you. Like your house, your car, your mach your any machine, your wife, your children, all these are having insurable. Because if anybody is having any problem, faces any problem, financially you are going to suffer. But on the contrary, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot insure an unknown person. You cannot insure a person's property who is not known to you. Because if there is a fire in the property, if there is a fire or there is a death of that other person whom you don't know, you are not going to have a financial loss. So, it is it is against the insurable interest. That is why I cannot take insurance on unknown person or I cannot insure a property which is not belonging to me. I cannot insure any asset which does not belong to me because if that kind of asset is lost, is damaged, then I will not get any financial loss because I don't own it. So if I don't own it, I will not get any financial liabilities. Because of this, I cannot insure those assets, those people who are not known or the assets which don't belong to me. I cannot insure them. This is what is called as insurable interest. So if you want to see, if you want to think whether the insurable interest is there in that particular asset or person you should think that you should think that if it is lost if it is destroyed if it is damaged will there be a financial loss financial liability on that person if the answer is yes then there is insurable interest in that person some exceptions definitely are there but those are exceptions in general this is correct let us talk about some exception which is hap which is you know legally it has been uh, ruled by the law some of the exceptions are you cannot have insurable interest or uh, a brother cannot have an insurable interest in his sibling like two brothers are there one brother cannot insure the other, other brother or one brother cannot insure the sister there is no insurable interest as per the law there has been ruling in many countries that there is no insurable interest in them. Why we say that? By the way, please students, make note of this point because it is not there in the handout. So, why there is no insurable interest between the siblings? Because it is known, it is, uh, it is observed that many, you know, unfortunately many killings have happened brother has insured the other brother and he has killed that on the other brother to get you know benefit but for that matter sister so the court has overruled this that there is no financial obligation between the brothers therefore there is no insurable interest you cannot insure each other secondly another example I will give you husband cannot insure the wife more than him is insurance again it is observed there is a limit of insurable interest between husband and wife husband sometimes it has been observed not I am not saying the others will do but it has been uh, legal cases which I am sharing with you right now husband has taken more insurance on his wife and then the wife has died because of some accident or some because of some reasons. So this is also not correct. 
in most of the countries, 50% of the insurance, what the husband has, wife can be given. Only 50%. If 10 lakhs is for the husband, 5 lakhs will be given to the wife. That is the limit of insurable interest. That's all. But mother, father can have insurance on their children. No case has come till now, which is, you know, countering this problem that something wrong has happened. So there is no problem in taking insurance of parents on their children. On the name of their children, they can. There is insurable. So, uh, you know, this is the interesting concept of insurable interest. And this principle should be observed at any cost when we are doing underwriting. What is underwriting? Underwriting is we see whether this risk should be accepted by the insurer or not. There are underwriters in the insurance company. They will check. First thing they will check is before accepting the policy, before accepting the risk, is, is there an insurable interest? If there is no insurable interest, then they will reject and they will not give the policy to the insured. Second, the insurable interest reduces moral hazard. What does that mean? Dishonest person, he may say, he may take policy more than what he deserves. And then, uh, he can, he can destroy their property. But insurable interest says that, up to the limit of financial loss which he can undergo. More than that, some assured is not allowed. There is no insurable interest on a, pers on a person's property or asset more than its value. You cannot take insurance more than the value of the asset. It is not allowed. The insurable interest also sees the financial aspect of the person who is taking the policy. A very renowned person can take a higher policy. It will be accepted by the underwriters. But a middle class person, the same kind of policy cannot be given to a middle class person as compared to a big industrialist. Big industrialist can be given a bigger policy because his net worth is more. But a middle class person or a lower class person cannot be given the similar kind of policy as compared to that industrialist because of insurable interest. Insurable interest is lim limits the sum assured of the policy. Limits. Because more than the value of the asset, the sum assured cannot be given. It will not be approved by the underwriters of the insurer. Because more than the value of the asset, there is no insurable interest. So, moral hazard, dishonesty, they cannot say that value is very high. Or I suffered a big loss. This is stopped because of insurable interest. Because the limit is decided not more than the value of your asset. It determines the amount of the insured loss. That is the value. That's what we told you. Sure. When must an insurable interest exist? At the time of taking the policy or at the time of uh, claim. So let us see. For a life insurance, for that matter, life insurance, there is, uh, I think it is written somewhere, in life insurance, yeah. life insurance is not a contract of indemnity, but it is valued policy at pre stated some amount on the death of it. This, the beneficiary has a legal claim to receive. Policy proceed. He, she, he she need not show that loss has been incurred by the insured's death. That means if there is no insurable interest at the time of the claim has come, there is no problem. Only the insurable interest at the time of taking the policy of life insurance, there should be insurable interest. So in life insurance, there is no problem in the beginning only. There should be insurable interest. After that, there is no, no checking. But in case of, say, property, or in case of marine, there should be insurable interest. Like, for example, in marine policy, 
you have booked the goods to the ship. Till now, the goods have not gone to the ship. So, there is no insurable interest. Policy says that insurance will be given only after it has been shipped in the, the containers, the goods are put in the ship. Before that, nothing. At, so right now, it is on the land, so there is no insurable interest. But still, if there is a marine policy, which is a cover of goods, while shipment is there, while it is in the ship, there is marine policy. If there is a claim, the goods get uh, uh, destroyed or the ship gets uh, sunk in the sea, till the, till the claim will be given. Because at that point of time, when the claim has originated, there was insurable interest. But when he was taking the policy, there was no insurable interest because the goods were on the land. But when the claim came, there was insurable interest. So, in general insurance, in marine insurance, insurable interest should be there when the claim is given, not at the time of the policy. It depends upon case to case. Like in life insurance, it is initial, the beginning. So, let us see this. The property insurance, the insurable interest must exist at the time of loss. That two reasons for this requirement. First, most property insurance contracts are indemnity contracts. Only the loss recover, recovery. If an insurable interest did not exist at the time of loss, financial loss would not occur. Because if there is no in insurable interest, what kind of loss you have occurred? Insurable interest only occurs when the property is damaged and you suffer a loss. That's what it is saying. For example, if Mr. X sells his car to Mr. Y and it was stolen before the insurance on the car is cancelled. Mr. X sells his car to Mr. Y. X is not the owner now. He has sold to Mr. Y. And then it got, uh, you know, and it was stolen before the insurance on the car is cancelled. Insurance is still there. But Mr. X cannot collect the, the money, the claim amount of theft because Mr. X is having no insurable interest in the policy now. Mr. X has already sold his car to Mr. Y. He is not the owner. Whatever happens to the car, X is not affected. And also, Mr. Y cannot get the claim because Mr. Y name is not there in the policy document. Again, he will not get... He has insurable interest, by the way. Mr. Y has now insurable in interest because he is the owner now, new owner. And the car has been lost. He has insurable interest, but his name is, he is not the owner of the policy. That's why again Mr. Y will also not get the claim. So this is how the insurable interest works. Okay. Now we talk about principle of utmost good faith. What faith is we are ask, we are talking about? Utmost good faith means that a higher degree of honesty is imposed on both parties, insured and insurer. Students, if you don't know what is insured and insurer, please see the chapter 1, 2, 3, please. Everywhere I have referred. To an insurer's contract. Degree, higher degree of honesty to an insurance contract than which is imposed on parties of other contract. Insurance is a contract. It is a legal contract because it is also having contract as one condition that is a payment should be there. Then only it is a contract even if it is one bill. But one rupee or one dollar. For that matter any small amount contract it is a requirement of contract and insurance is also a contract. But in this insurance contract, as compared to other legal contracts, degree of honesty is expected more from insured as well as from insured. So it is about marine insurance because marine insurance, the in the older times, we don't know what goods are coming or are they in good condition or not. On the basis of declaration of the insured, the insurer used to accept that the quality of the goods are okay and they are not broke. It, is, it was on the trust. So, honesty was very important. 
So the marine insurer had to place great faith in statements made by the applicant for insurance concerning the cargo to be shipped. As I told you, the property to be insured may not have been visually inspected because it is from other country it is coming. The principle of utmost good faith is supported by three important legal principles. Representation, concealment and warranty. What is a representation? Representation are statements made by the applicant for insurance. Applicant says that my age is this. I don't have any blood pressure. I don't have any heart disease. I am a healthy person. I have never gone to the hospital. All these are the statement, material facts. So these are the material facts. What are the material facts? Material facts are the important facts about you or your circumstances that influence the insurer's decision on whether to issue a policy or not. Like if you have very very high blood pressure, you have a heart disease, you have a heart attack, insurer, the underwriter may not. Step your risk. But suppose these facts, these material facts are told by the insurer as false. Like nothing happened. Uh, I am healthy. But he is not healthy. If it is falsely stated, then the insurer has a right to reject your claim. When the claim comes, can be rejected. Again, the last is reliance means that the insurer relies on a misinterpretation, the wrong information in issuing the policy. If you have said that I have, the person has a heart disease or heart problem, blood pressure, premium may be increased and accepted. But you said misrepresentation of you no know, healthy state, which you were not healthy, and and you you paid less premium. This is again a problem for the release of claim. When the claim comes, the insurer can reject your claim. These things should be avoided. Mr. X may apply for life insurance and state in the application form that he has not visited a doctor within the last five years, but he may undergo as is six months earlier. This is a misrepresentation. Any misrepresentation of material facts. As per the this principle, the claim can be rejected by the insurer. So that is why it is said as principle of utmost good faith. Now, in terms of uh, you know, uh, this is in terms of insured. But nowadays, in many countries, insurers are also obligated. Obligated in what sense? Some countries say that after two years of policy in place, principle of utmost good faith cannot be the reason for rejecting the claim by the insurer in some company, in some uh, cases. The ruling has come. Because two years have already passed and you cannot because the insurer also wants to stop the claims. Okay. So, utmost good faith does not mean that after two years of taking the premium also, you put a point with relevance to utmost good faith that this information was concealed and because of that we are rejecting the claim. The court may give a ruling in the favor of insured and the claim may be forced to be given. So, now this thing has also come that principle of utmost good faith after two years can be challenged and the benefit can be given to the insured. It was two years you have taken the premium and now you are, the insurer is saying that I will not give the claim. So to protect the interest of uh, insured, many rulings have happened that if the two years have passed, principle of utmost good faith can be challenged by the insured. So what is a warranty? Warranty means like the principle of utmost faith 
is supported by three important legal principles. First is representation. Representations are statements made by the applicant for the insurance. For example, if a person wants to apply for life insurance, he will tell his age, weight, height, occupation, state of health. All this, these are called representation. So, our representation should be correct. Second is concealment, hiding some facts. This is giving wrong representation means you should give the right information. That is representation. Now what is concealment? You are not telling any lies, but you are hiding something to get better uh, insurance. Like, if there, it is not mentioned that about your heart status. It is not mentioned. So you just quietly ignore it. That is called as concealment of facts. You should have told that you are suffering from IBP. In, no matter it is not asked in the form, application form of insurance. But still you are supposed to tell if there is a big problem in you. Everything cannot be asked. Some points may be missed by the insurer. But still it is your responsibility to not to conceal any facts. Hide any facts. That is called concealment. It is not allowed. Warranty. What is warranty? Warranty means that you are saying to the insurance company that I have taken precautions that theft will not happen. Burglary will not happen. Burglary and theft are different. Burglary is post. Theft is hidden. You are not there. Burglary is by guns. They will come in. So burglary will not happen because I have some protection. I have a guard outside. I have cameras. I have uh, precautionary you know, defense mechanisms. All this you say. You give warranty. But this may not be true. You may be telling lies to the insurance company. And then when the claim comes, insurance company will check whether what all you said was right or not. If it is wrong, then again your claim will be rejected. So this should be avoided. Now we will talk about principle of indemnity in the next 